Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. If you came over from the main channel, you would see the making of this infinity candle fun candle holder thingy. Now I did one recently and I want to actually go through some of the things that I did differently on this, why I did them, and go through some of the ideas behind the process of making this in this video today. So we're going to have a little bit of fun with this and I'd love to hear your comments or ideas or do you have anything that I should do differently next time? Let me know down below. But let's actually dive into the build. We're going to be working with some one-sided reflective plexiglass. <laughs> this is interesting stuff. It's basically plexiglass, but there's a film on one side that is a one-way reflective mirror. And so if it, the light is brighter on one side or the other, the light bounces around inside, which gives you that uh, multi-glass feeling. Looks kind of cool, fun to play with. You can't find it at most stores, so I'll leave a link to it down in the description below if you want to try something like this yourself. Ready? I keep the protective film on both sides so that it, it doesn't get scratched up too much while I'm breaking it. Hey. But uh, for the, the actual cutting of it, I need to score both sides of the plexiglass and then I put it in the vise and put it right at the height of that line and snap it off. For the first one, I marked it out with a ruler, but then I found I could actually mark it off a little bit easier with the marking gauge. And then I can come back in with a knife and score the marking gauge line a little bit deeper. And the score from the marking gauge line actually gives a track for the knife to follow in. So it makes it fairly easy to cut that line all the way across, score it on both sides. You have to be a little more careful with some of these smaller pieces as they, uh, they tend to break off. And so I find that using a board helps them go together a little bit better. Now to glue them up, I need to actually remove the film from the inside. And then I'm going to use this plexiglass glue. I'll leave a link to this down below as well. It's a specific glue designed for this, and in just a single drop or two, if the seam is yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. will flow all the way down and make it really nice. So let's work on the base, because we know it is all about the base. And for this one, I'm going to make it out of walnut. I know, I'm not using white oak, I'm using walnut. <laughs> but I had this piece of it, and I, I thought it would be kind of fun. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, interesting carving on the edge. So walnut is a really nice wood for that. Very forgiving, very easy wood to work with. It's not something you have to worry about. So once I have three sides trued up, I, or excuse me, one side trued up, I can then cut the other three sides. And mark that out, cut it down. Uh, that gives me three of the four sides. And then we can square those two sides off to the one side we already have, <laughs> and then cut off the fourth side. This way we can make sure we have a really nice square base. Square, square. <laughs> but uh, the walnut is so easy to work with. It's, once you play with it, it's just, it's so comforting and warming. And then you go back to oak and it's like, I'm oak. But uh, oh, very enjoyable. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a lot of chamfering because I do a lot of that and some people have been getting a bit of a guff for that. So I'm going to try something a little different on here. I'm going to chamfer the corners just a little bit to kind of break them. Then I'm going to use a mortising gauge to mark off either side about an eighth inch in. Grab a gouge that fits well. I think this is a uh, 214, uh, excuse me, a 614, something like that. Sharpen it up on the strop, which you can buy on Wood by Right if they are in stock. So keep an eye on that. And then we're going to gouge out a groove. And this really scares a lot of people like, oh no, how am I going to get a really nice clean gouge? Well, that's what those two marking gauges are for. The line on either side then gives you a stop point on either side. And so I'll cut towards one side until I get up next to that line. And then I'll cut a little bit more towards the other side. And then I go until the gouge touches both lines at the same time. And that way I know I have a perfect circumference all the way around. And you get this really nice clean line that it looks really sharp and it looks like it went right through a router, but it's not. It was completely hand cut. And you gotta love these walnut curls. It's just half the fun of it. So now let's go back to the box and finish gluing that up. And uh, I do each side and let it sit for five, 10 minutes, and then I'll do another side and uh, keep coming back to it until it gets glue all the way around. Once I have that glued up into four sides, I can put that onto the base and trace out where it needs to go. Needing to be very, very careful because I want a nice tight line on the outside. The next thing I want is a groove for it to go into. And thankfully I have an eighth inch chisel, which happens to be the exact same thickness of the glass that I'm putting in, an eighth inch. So I can lay out the line to the thickness of my chisel and then lightly chop in on both of those lines, inside and outside of the track. This gives it a slightly deeper cut that we can then come in and pair out. Speaking of which, it's always good to sharpen up the chisel a little bit, make sure it is honed and good and ready to go. 
then we can chisel it out. And this was just so much fun. These tiny little curls pulling out of the groove. It was absolutely gorgeous, and I was excited. Uh, can you tell? I, I was having a little bit of fun here. And it's times like this where you get these perfect little curls that are... Uh, this is why I do hand tools right here. That's... Yeah, that's happy. <laughs> so once we've been playing with that and we have a groove all the way around, then we can start putting the box into place. And uh, this was a little bit tricky. I had to work on it back and forth. And I actually had to widen the groove a little bit at some point in order to make it fit in there. But back and forth between um, cutting the groove a little bit wider and working on the box, I got to fit down in there. Actually, in one place I had to trim off the box a little bit. And that was, uh, it was very scary to do, but actually plexiglass planes really well. It's, it, it planes off beautifully if you have a nice sharp chisel, they will carve it down. So once we have this groove down to depth, make sure it fits, and then we can adjust the plexiglass a little bit to fit in there, uh, then we can get to the gluing. Oh, well, here I'm actually going back and uh, trimming it up a little bit wider so that it fits down. Just to get that a little early. Oh, well. <laughs> There you can see the planing off. Sounds really good, really nice, works really well. Plexiglass is a nice thing. Before actually gluing it in, we need to make sure we remove the plastic because you don't want that plastic stuck in there. And you probably should finish the wood before gluing it in, but I didn't think about that until it was too late. Uh, for the actual adhesion of it, I just used a little bit of five minute epoxy and worked that into the grooves, trying not to get it on the outside of the groove, as I did in a couple spots. I was kind of rushing at this point because I had a time deadline, but uh, next time I think I would take it a little bit, uh, a little bit slower here. Slide it down in and let that epoxy seal it in place. It's not going to have a whole lot of pressure, so there's no real reason for the uh, epoxy to be incredibly strong. I just used a couple lightweight clamps to hold it in place, and it was about this time I realized, wait a second, maybe I should have finished it before putting it together. <laughs> but it worked pretty well, cleaning off the excess and we're ready to light a candle and try it out. And I love how this came out. It's just a, a cool all around effect. Looks really good and it's one of those things you can stare at for hours, coming at it from different angles and seeing all the lights in it as you move around. They go off in all directions. Kind of fun and I hope you like it. So there you have it. Uh, this was a really fun one. I like how this came out and it was a bit of a learning experience with the plexiglass gluing. It's the first time I've done that and I think I'm going to do a few other things like that in the future. But uh, for right now, I'm really happy with how this came out. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas. If you would like to see the artistic video, I have that on the main channel, Wood by Right. But for right now, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this and until next time, have a wonderful day. So is this like an analog LED?